Flight boss, bitch. You know, for sure. You're now listening to the mind of an Terry's moon. Flight boss, the Archangel Uriel. And I'm here to carry our God duties of motherfucker responsibilities. And right now, we're going to talk about the feather of my eye. That's right, the feather of my eye. Now, before we even break down this motherfucking video, this is what you need to understand. Fuck words, signs, sigils, symbols, and, and fuck all that shit. Listen, it's your spiritual responsibility to understand the energy signatures that's going on behind what you see externally, behind what you see in the yang realm, behind the words, letters, and the things that you see, and these and these texts that you see. It's your spiritual responsibility because us being mankind, women and men, we know this is something we do. We give signs and symbols and sigils to perceive an energy, right? But here's the thing though, right? You have certain beings here who give their power away and cling on to one person's specific idea about that energy. So when you got a bunch of people following that meaning and reasoning, uh, that that person, that man or woman made up about that idea, then you miss the point, right? So you end up clinging on to comedic science or end up uh, clinging on to, you know what I'm saying, the uh, thinking that the old civilizations was either smarter or dumber. Look, you need to get all that out your mind right now. So when I say things like, fuck my aunt, you don't need to get offended because there's an energy signature that that been playing that same role way before y'all then gave it the name my aunt. So that's what I want to get clear right now. So if you are a spiritual person, you need to know that these words and these meanings is the least of the fact. You see what I'm saying? So for us to describe it right now, let's now that that's out the way, let's break this motherfucking video down. Let's talk about the feather in my eye. Now, there's an energy signature. There's a behind the scenes energy that's constantly going on. So I'm going to describe it the best way y'all people can kind of correlate it. So when we talk about the uh the feather in my eye, let's talk about what it represents. Now, if you want to go to man-made terms and things of that nature, it's going to say that the feather represents truth. But why does the feather represent truth? See, this is what the questions that people need to uh, ask themselves. Why does the feather represent truth? Now, here's what we need to understand. Truth doesn't have anything to do with this uh, with this realm of reality or any type of lower animalistic um, natures. You know what I'm saying? You know what it takes to dive you into your lower animalistic nature. You know your pleasures, your desires, you know what I'm saying? Your passions. So for the most part, we know that your feelings and emotions has has zero to do with truth. Therefore, you can hear the truth and regardless of your emotions and feelings about the circumstance, you should be consciously aware enough to know that you're hearing the truth. You see what I'm saying? So there's the thin line between truth has nothing to do with uh, the, the lower realm of reality. So we know lower animalistic realms of realities carries weight, carries density. So once you look at the feather, right, the reason why the feather of my eye represents truth because it's carrying the energy signature of lightness. Now, when I was in my last video, I told y'all when y'all want to perceive light, y'all need to perceive it as in the in the sense of weight. So for the most part, look at a feather, a, a feather, a feather is very light, right? It's very light. So it's trying to give you a representation of an energy signature, but it's trying to use different light forms, aka shapes and forms to represent that energy signature. So everything you see that's light here or give off light have the same energy signature to it, regardless of the name you want to call it, whether you want to call it a sun or whether you want to call it a feather or whether you want to call it a particle or a light. It's still got the same energy signature behind it, just in a different vibrational uh, vortex, which means if it's heavy, dense or or lighter dense in that aspect. If it's a bigger body or a smaller body in that aspect. But for the most part, it's still carrying the same energetic signature. So when you look at a feather, a feather represents lightness, right? So it is, it's light. So now, since it represents truth, and I just got through explaining that truth has nothing to do with lower animalistic natures, then that's letting you know that the, the feather of my eye represents lightening your load in some way, shape, or form. So we know in a spiritual context... Adding water, adding weight to your spirit is adding feelings and emotions, adding, adding emotional attachments to things. You know what I'm saying? Adding this extra emotional sense to the external shapes and forms that you got to, a.k.a. you, you worry about things. You, you got responsibilities. You probably got popularity or you probably got heavy pleasures and desires if you don't got popularity. You probably got a lot of responsibilities you got to take care of in your life. A lot of burdens. Uh, your name hold weight down here. All that is carrying an uh, energetic signature of 
uh, water or density or weight being or something being added to your spirit. What brings your spirit down. So in a spiritual sense, that means you're spiritually heavy. So even if they want to use the concept of the heart, you know how they have this concept of when you die, um, my eye is going to weigh your heart with a feather. And if your heart is heavier than the feather, then um, motherfucking you're going to go, you, you coming back here or something like that. This is what they mean, right? Because you probably thinking in your head, how can a physical heart be any in any way, shape, or form lighter than a physical feather? See, they're talking about it on a spiritual nature. They're just using physical shapes and forms, lights and forms to represent that energy signature for you can understand it. But true spiritual people understand what's actually going on, what they mean by this. So this is what they actually mean. In a spiritual sense, right, your heart. Now, when we say things like, man, your heart, what, this person got a bad heart or they heavy on their heart. We know we, we speak in a spiritual sense. Think about what you're talking about. You're not you're not talking about a person's physical heart for them to go to the hospital and get the, the shockers pumped for it could beat again. You're talking about a person's characteristics. In the way that they in the way that they carry they carry themselves. So when you talk about a person's heart, you automatically talk when a person be like, man, I got a heavy heart, or I, or every time I think about this person, I cry. That's a that's a person with a heavy heart. That's a person with a lot of weight, a lot of water. We know water and astrology teach you about the element of it being dealing with the emotions and feelings. You know what I'm saying? This is why I encourage even this is why I even encourage flat earthers to be into at least a little bit of astrology because you will understand the element that you actually trying to correlate to for the most part. And then uh uh oh shit my bad but yeah like motherfucking um like the heart. So you want to make sure before you die, or you don't know when you're going to die, but you want to make sure each and every day, every second of the day that you're doing something to lighten your load. You're doing something to lighten up your heart, lighten up your mind. Because when you die with too much clutteredness, now here's the thing, that clutteredness is the outside light you bringing that within. So that clutteredness is like all your attachments, all your, all your versions of not seeing things no other way. So you only see it in this way. So that makes you too heavy to fly off. So you end up having to come back here and repeat the same scenario until your ass get tired of those same shapes and forms and end up jumping into your spiritual nature till you start detaching from certain shit so you always got to be so for your heart to be as light as the feather it's not hard because it's dealing with it's only dealing with something being light so so you see what i'm saying don't get lost into the physical thinking it's a physical heart it's just you lightening your load so then light the light of the feather just represents truth so if you've been living your truth You've been living in light. So you've been living with lightening your load. Not light as in the light that weighs you down, but lightening up as in your weight. And that's the real light. So for the most part, this will helps you fly and not have to come back into this realm of reality. You get to go into another realm of reality because you had no emotional attachments or no uh or no cluttered mind before you died. You was clear, uh, had clairvoyance. Um, you see what I'm saying? And you had chlorine in that waters. Now, this is what you need to understand also. Like I said, it's the energy signature that's behind everything. So there's there's a certain energy signature in the world that's trying to tell you that you're going to keep repeating the same thing unless you lighten up your low, start to care less. You see what I'm saying? So it happens on a smallest vibrational scale to a large vibrational scale. Think about the routines and the patterns you do every day that you're tired of. You see what I'm saying? That's a form of creating heavy and weight onto you because you're you're tired of doing these things, yet you keep doing it. And you're creating justifications and things for you to keep doing it. Then if you was to say, I don't give a fuck and stop doing it, but it's going to be hard for you to do that because of all your attachments to your reasonings of doing it. So you see, you see how lost you might be also based upon other people, places and things that's here in front of you, that's creating scenarios for to make things heavy for you. You see what I'm saying? Now, for the most part, this is also what you need to understand. It's the same energy signature that's going along. So you can watch cartoons, movies. Here's a, um, here's, it's a good segue into, um, the movie Constantine. Uh, if you ever seen the movie Constantine, this is a good representation of the Ma'a energy and not even just the Ma'a energy. It's, it's just utilizing the director of that movie Constantine was utilizing the same energy signature that Ma'a or whoever created the Ma'a character was using. Right. So as on a spiritual nature, if you understand the movie Constantine and you can understand it clearly. Like now, who is Constantine? Constantine was a motherfucker who killed himself because he was seeing a bunch of things that he didn't want to see in this realm. So he thought if he was to kill himself, he won't see these things no more. 
But here's what fucking happened. When he killed himself, when he slit his wrist as a kid, in order to stop seeing these things, he actually went to the realm that these things was coming from. So he didn't actually die. He, 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 he was like dead for like two minutes. But then he came back to life. And then he had an understanding. He was like, oh, okay. I'm just seeing things. I'm seeing the behind the scenes realm. So since that day forward, he ended up having all this burden on him and, and, and doing all these ob ob obligations and shit like Constantine the movie. That's the story of my life. The same way he had bad lungs and he had to stop smoking the same way I got a bad stomach and liver and kidneys and, and I got and I have to, I can't eat. But we both on the same spiritual path and understanding. So Constantine is me. Basically, like my real fucking life is Constantine. But check this fucking out right here, though. Um, You know. Constantine is, is the, the whole movie is constructed behind the energy signature of my eye because he had to make a sacrifice to, in order to fly in order for him to go back to heaven. And he was he carrying all this heavy weight and burden and he was lost into thinking that he had to slay a bunch of demons or uh, take a bunch of demonic spirits out of uh, possessed bodies and shit like that. He, he thought he had to do that a whole bunch of times and, and work his way into heaven. Well, really, it was that's that's still adding emotional and feelings. He learned that at the end of, at the end of the movie. He learned that you still add and harbor and emotion and feelings to yourself when really in all reality, you need to put yourself in a situation where you need to not give a fuck and eat and and sacrifice. Think about sacrificing. Everything that you sacrifice is things that you don't give a fuck about. Now, you might give a fuck about it based upon the meaning or the, how close that person, place, or thing is to you, but you have to put it in a scenario or you have to put it in a spot in your life where you have to let it be for a moment. You have to not give a fuck about it for a moment. And in a spiritual sense, that's lightening your load. In a physical sense, since you're lost in a physical, you might think that's something bad, but really it's not on a spiritual nature. So he has to give up cigarettes. But here's what we need to understand about this. Right. Why is developed in the, the Ma'at energy? Because he needed to do that in order to go to heaven. Now, the whole story is crazy in general. You see what I'm saying? Because, see, the story of Constantine and what they was trying to do in the movie was this. The devil had a son. The same way God had a son. So in this movie, it's, it's perceived as God's son is Jesus. And um, the devil had a son also. Now, in order for the devil's son to come into this realm. It would have to it would have to take the procedure the same way God's son got taken out of this realm. So what do that mean, right? In order for the devil's son to come into this realm, the same weapon would have to be used that that killed Jesus to take Jesus out of this realm. So there's a Pacific knife that plays a role in this movie that possessed it, an Asian or something that was in this movie. This um now this weapon I forgot what the knife was called. I forgot what it was called, but. This was the weapon that was used to kill Jesus on the cross. So they, they're trying to say the cross didn't actually kill Jesus. It was, it was actual a Pacific person with this Pacific weapon, this knife, and it pierced the side of the rib of Jesus. It pierced the side of Jesus and the blood bled on it, on the knife, and which made the knife magical in, in general in the first place. So this knife that killed Jesus is needed to bring the devil's son into the world. Now, for the most part, they need a psychic being. They need a, they're, they're needed a person who can see things the same way uh, Constantine seen things, but it has to be a twin. Therefore, the demonic, the demonic spirit can possess the, the twin and, and make the, make the twin kill herself, which would happen. And therefore, since they was, since they was twins that can see things like Constantine, this, this was an able, it has to be a psyche. It has to be a psyche. Now, in this case right here, since they're twins, twins is one spirit that just separated itself. So now it's two individual uh, spirits that just separated themselves. That's another video. But in, as far as this movie Constantine, it has to take a, uh, twins that has psychic abilities like Co Constantine. Therefore, when one of the twins die, it will be easy for the other twin to psychically channel that twin. Now, this is why it was needed. Right. When one of the twins got possessed it and killed herself. Right. The other psychic twin was able to psychically channel that twin will would, would allow the situation for the alive twin to um, create scenarios and situations that led her to Constantine whether she knew what she was doing or not. So for the most part, that channeling layer, right? Now the devil's son was able to take the, the spirit of the twin that died and was able to plant the seed of him wanting to come into this realm of reality within the spirit. And since that spirit is the same spirit of the twin that's still alive, like I, like I just explained, y'all just separated y'all so. 
it was able to plant the seed in the physical mind of that same spirit. So since that same spirit is still alive in the physical twin that's alive, the seed is being planted with the idea. So therefore, this is why she was able to get, uh, had the immaculate conception type of, and get pregnant without having sex the same way Mary did, um, through possession. You see, this is what y'all need to understand. Fuck how y'all feel about y'all religion. You need to look at it, what it's actually doing. It is what it is. Mary was fucking possessed. Jesus was possessed. You know what I'm saying? Same way in the movie Constantine, the twin got possessed, and this is how she got pregnant the same way Mary did without having fucking sex. Now, for the most part, right, she ended up having the child of the demon son, I mean, of the devil son, right? So, um, it took Constantine to sacrifice himself to not give a fuck about his own physical body in order to slow down time for, um... For, for that situation to get rectified, if you've seen the movie Constantine, you know what I'm talking about. For um, for time to slow down and for, um, you know, that process can stop and for the devil could come. Because the devil and God, they work at they work in order So as far as this movie. So, you know, the demon son is trying to do things out of order. So, you know, the, the, the devil went in there and made his son go back to hell. Like you can't, you gotta, you gotta wait your turn. You gotta die and transform and come into this level of life. You can't just do it just like that, motherfucker. That was the same fucking reason fucking Jesus got killed. You see what I'm saying? But that's a whole nother video. But if you understand the movie Constantine, the, the movie is deep. The movie is deep as fuck. You see what I'm saying? But it's a story, it, but it's still the energy signature of my eye because Constantine was getting ready to go to heaven at the end because he lightened his load. But the devil, what the devil did was give him some new lungs. He, he went in, in his body, in the, his physical body, took out those bad fucking lungs and, and put some new fresh lungs in there. So therefore, it gave him another chance to see if he gonna start smoking again. You know what I'm saying? Because if he starts smoking again, he gonna start adding all that heavy weight and worry again and that's a form of killing itself and him going back to hell and you know the devil was looking at Constantine like man that's a prized spirit right there I need that spirit where I'm at you know what I'm saying I don't need that spirit going and helping God I need that spirit with me you know what I'm saying and that's how he was looking at it and shit like that so like I said angels and demons these are bodies Angels is, is a body. Demons is a body. Now, we are all spirits. So you can be a demon or you could be an angel based upon your spiritual nature. Now, like I said, you have different forms of bodies in different realms of realities. But in our realm of reality, it still plays out the same thing. You got demons and you got angels. So you got spirits in bodies, right? In bodies and whatever energetic spirit that is, you're going to see the way they carry out through that body. So if you see a motherfucker doing a bunch of negative shit, that's a motherfucking demon, a demonic ass spirit. You see a motherfucker doing a motherfucking um, bunch of positive shit, that's an uh, angelic spirit. So, you know what I'm saying? So, this body will be a, this is why I call myself the Archangel Uriel, because the spirit in my body, I'm a high spirit. So, the, the, the forms that I play out in this body, this will be an angelic body. Then you got certain low vibrational ass spirits that like to do everything in an animalistic nature. They look just like you. They look just like me, right? So they just like you, but the spirit in there is vibrating low. So this body will be, will be perceived as a demon. We would call that, that's a motherfucking demon. They always stealing. They always thiefing in somebody's house and shit like that. You see what I'm saying? So, you know, uh, when we talk about the feather of my eye, you know that the energetic signature behind it has it has nothing to do with an actual heart. It has nothing to do with an actual feather. It just has to do with the energetic signature, the energetic, the energetic signature, sinistry that goes behind these things. So we know what is a feather. A feather is light. A feather can blow. A feather could go into the wind. What is the heart? We know the heart is dealing with the emotions, the feelings, the passion, the desires, right? So we need the heart to be light. Then you know you need to, 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 to you know we know you need to detach from a lot of the things that the heart may carry and make it the feather like. And making it feather like is when you correlate the heart with truth. So anytime you correlating your emotions and feelings with truth, a lot of times that that don't even deal with emotions and feelings. Because once you learn the truth about something, you're able to either detach your emotional feeling that you had on it previously, or the truth has nothing to do with your emotions and feelings in general. Because regardless of how you feel about it, it's the motherfucking truth. So a lot of motherfuckers need to hear the fucking truth. You see what I'm saying? And maybe it'll wake their motherfucking ass up. So that's that's what we're trying to understand. That's, that's the energetic signature is trying to tell you. That you can go up in consciousness. 
in the physical realm if you lighten your load. And then when you die, you can go to a higher spiritual realm and a higher physical realm if your load is light. Now, if you carry a bunch of heaviness, when you die, you go down. You go lower. So how that would play out is, say we all in the same place, right? When you come back here, you're just going to have a lot more experiences. And a lot more experiences means a lot more repetition. And a lot a lot more rep repetition, I mean. And a lot more repetition means a lot more pattern. So you end up experiencing the same pattern and a routine over and over again, which will be a form of a hell until you get into your spiritual sense of, oh, I'm tired of this. And then in that lifetime, in the present, you will start, you will start getting on the, the path of detaching from shit. You see what I'm saying? Now, as far as you already being spiritually inclined and already having this information, right? And already understanding the energy signature that's behind my eye, then you already on that path right now, in the present right now. Like, all right, it's shit that I'm tired of right now. It's shit that I don't even want to experience because I see what other people are going through. You already on the right motherfucking path right now. And you already on your way into creating the experiences that your spirit want to experience. So when you die, you take those shapes and forms. And then that birth and then that family and then that world that you be birthed into, it may be the same way here. But here's the difference. You could be standing right next to somebody and you in heaven and they in hell. But y'all both looking at the same goddamn shit. But you know what's different? Perspectives and life and what y'all manifested. God damn it, fight boss bitch. Air. <laughs>